Well, doing a quick bit of work on the pick and place machine. I found this piece of scrap aluminum at the local junk dealer and picked it up pretty cheap. Uh, unfortunately, it's too long and a little bit shorter than the wood bed on there. It's 50 millimeters long by, oh, I forgot how wide it is. Let me see if I can check. Okay, that was easy. It's 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters where this plate is something much larger than 50. By about 45. Um, that's not a big deal because that will make the, if I center the plate on the machine, it'll end right about here where the current plate ends here. I can't use this space underneath these rails for anything because the carriage doesn't make it all the way over to them anyways. So I'm going to go with the cheap solution. Uh, to fix the length, I thought I was going to have to go out and buy a non-ferrous metal blade for my circular saw, but I was digging in my cordless circular saw box and I found this blade that was marked wood slash thin metals. Um, don't know what they think thin is, but I don't know if this will focus. Nope, doesn't look like it will. I have to stop the video to focus. I'll do that. I did a little test cut right here, as you can see, and it had no problems cutting through this aluminum. So right there is my 50 millimeter mark. Saw's all set up. I'm going to lop the end of this plate off and then eventually make that the new base of the pick and place machine. And that's done. I uh, made a lot of aluminum confetti and the cut is actually pretty decent. Uh, it wanders a little bit on this end because the guide on the saw came off the edge at that point. But good enough to work for that. Here's my plate again. I went marked and center punched holes 10 millimeters from the front and back edge, I guess you'd call it as a plate. And the first hole is 10 millimeters from the edge. So that gives me the most support I can around that hole. And then I just basically split the distance between those two 10 millimeter holes into thirds and put two more holes equally spaced on both edges. Here, is the collection of hardware that came off of the original base plates right there. Um, I just used little button screws, button heads, and washers. I'm going to reuse the nuts and go to flat heads. That way I can countersink these down into the surface of that plate and end up with a perfectly flat surface in case I have some sort of uh, fixed your plate or something that needs to ride over the top of those screws. I don't have to drill out little pockets for where the screw heads poke up. Um, when these screws are assembled and fully threaded to the bottom, I get about 7 millimeters from the top of the head to the top of this flange when installed in the T-rail. So I should just about be perfect for these plates. Okay, that's it until I get some more work done. I'm just going to set up on the drill press over here and drill and countersink those holes. Okay, so I got my plate drilled and I countersinked and put all the little bolts and T-nuts on the back side. On the front side, slight change of plans. I did countersink them, but I forgot to take in the t to account the 2 millimeter thickness that's the webbing on there. So the 7 millimeters was from the top of the flathead screw to the top of this T-nut. So to fix that, I just counter bore or countersunk the screws down 2 millimeters, and all is good. Next, I'm going to pull those bottom rails out, get them mounted to the plate, and see if I can get this whole thing put back together and square again. Okay, I was able to slide everything back on. Um, I slid the rails onto the plate first and then slid the whole top assembly back in from one end. Um, currently none of this is tightened down to these rails. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to flush up the rails on this end so the excess sticks off over here. Uh, eventually I'm going to mount a track for all the cabling on that side. And then the other thing I'm going to do is center this plate in the middle of the gantry. 
the plate will no longer go all the way out to this edge, but this space underneath the, what would this be, the Y axis, isn't usable to me because the head can't get there. In fact, the head can't get any farther than this. So the fact that the plate's a little narrower than the original base is no big deal. And this is going to be way stiffer than particle board ever could be. Okay, here's some quick notes on squaring up the plate once you get it together. Uh, step one, loosen all the T bolts and T-nuts along the plate and the bottom two bolts on each of the upright plates. Make sure everything in the rest of the gantry is tight and square to each other. Otherwise, this will be all for naught because as that as these plates and these rollers move, it changes how this gantry rolls on the tracks and hits these plates. So to start with, I picked a random corner, in this case this one, and fully tightened these two bolts once I flushed it up with the end of the extrusion here. Next, I pulled the gantry all the way to this end making sure the wheels were touching the plates. Once that was done, I knew the spacing between this plate and this plate was correct because uh, these rollers here hold it in position. So once that was done, I tightened up these two bolts as tight as I could get them. Next, I pulled this plate so that it was touching this plate and this plate and then tighten these four screws pretty good and tight. That gets the distance on this end and this rail to this to this edge of this plate square. After that was done, I picked up the whole unit and spun it around. So just assume for a second I did that. It's really a pain in the butt with the camera. So now that I spun it around, this plate, or these two bolts, this plate, and these two bolts are loose with respect to this rail down here. So the next thing I did is pull the gantry all the way to this end to get my spacing between uprights correct, lined up the end of the extrusion with what would have been this plate if I had spun it, because this would end up on that side then, lined it up with the end of this, tighten these two bolts, and since this was all the way down here, I could tighten these two up, but I decided not to. What I noticed was it was grossly out of square. And the way I was able to tell that easily is if you look in here, you notice these wheels are touching this plate. Um, I have, if everything is correct, I should have that same thing on both sides. On this side, it's actually the lower wheel that's touching. Well, when I first did this, I had like a half inch gap on one side. So I just tighten the two bolts on this to lock, or sorry, tighten the two bolts here to lock this extrusion to this plate, and then just started pushing on this plate while holding this corner. What that did is it sort of flexed the whole square to take it from the rhombus shape it currently was and get it back into a square or rectangle depending on the dimensions of your plate. So while I watch the gaps on these wheels, not a good place to see that, the gaps on these wheels on either side, I just kept sliding this plate back and forth until the gaps closed up on both sides. Once the gaps were closed, I tightened these screws down, locking this, the rectangle in position, and then pulled this all the way to this end and then tighten these two screws last which then set the distance between these two uprights on this end. Uh, once that was all done I double checked the squareness by measuring from this surface on this upright to this surface on that upright and then compared that measurement to the other diagonal and it was dead on as far as I could tell with a tape measure. Um, if I had a giant caliper, I probably could get it closer, but this is as good as I'm going to be able to get with the tools I have at hand. So, there you have it. There's my aluminum base plate upgrade for the pick and place. 
Um, hopefully, I'll get some time, edit this up, and up upload this before I return to previously scheduled programming. Um, what is next? So right now I have the Y-axis home sensor. I need an X-axis home sensor. Plus, I need to mount all my wiring drag chain, uh, both for this dimension and this dimension. I haven't quite figured out how that's going to work yet. Um, then the next thing to machine after that is the actual nozzle holders, which I promised I'd take some video of when I got to that. So I now have the mag mount for the lathe, or the camera mag mount, so I don't, I'm really running out of excuses. It's just coming down to time at this point. But update, it's not dead. I'm still working on it. Hopefully more in a few days. Later.